Resetting, Inspection and Repairs The two types of impacts that can occur to a redirective crash attenuator are side impacts and front impacts. Side Impact Inspection and Repair Side impacts may only need a thorough inspection and some cleaning of the attenuator. First, you should check all of the side panels and side panel bolts, as well as the shear bolts. If you see any damage, these parts should be replaced. Next, inspect the support frames. You should not see any evidence of cracking or bending. Pay careful attention to the upstops that hold the frames to the channel. The side guide bolts should be removed and inspected in the general impact area. These upstops experience the full impact of the vehicle both laterally and vertically. They should not be bent or show damage. The support frames can be easily removed by removing the upstop and side panel bolts. If a side panel must be replaced, you will have to remove the four side keeper bolts. Then you can slide out the side panel. There are three side keeper bolts. The winged keeper goes on the sled panel because it sustains the highest impact velocity and has more surface area. The taper on one side matches the sled panel taper. All of the center panels have a collar that is designed to pin the side panels to the mobile frames. However, the side keeper that goes in the last terminal brace has a shorter collar because it does not pin a panel to the mobile frame. The side keeper bolt collar rides in the slot on the outboard side panel. This collar pins the side panel on the inside to the support frame. Be sure to seat the collar into the side panel slot. Also, remember that the tapered trailing edge of a panel always goes on the outside when you replace the panel. Our front sled unit is very sturdy. Inspect the sled frame for any damage, then check the rollers that hold it on the channels. If there is damage, the sled should be replaced. To remove the sled, you will have to remove the side panels by removing six bolts, and you will have to remove the front stop bolts. Once these bolts are removed, you can lift the panel off. Next, disconnect the spelter socket. You can drive out the pin from the side of the unit, and when it is loose, you can reach in and remove it. Now you can slide the sled off the front of the channels, and then you can put the new sled back in position. That is a complete inspection and repair for a side impact. The front impact is always more laborious to repair in any attenuator. The frontal impact resetting starts with disconnecting the spelter socket as discussed earlier. Once this is done, you should attach a strap or chain to the bottom horizontal tube on the front of the sled and pull the unit out to the stop bolts in the channel. You will need a vehicle with sufficient power and traction. Remove the cover plates on the cylinder sheave assemblies. When you take the covers off, you will see the two outer anti-rotation pins, and you will need to remove them. The center pin stays in because it holds the sheaves in place and allows them to rotate. The SCI 100 GM can be reset very quickly by industry standards by making sure that you know a couple of important facts. First, we have two shear bolts in the mobile sheave assembly at the front of the cylinder. 
After these bolts get sheared off, the remnants must be removed before you try to pull the cylinder and sheaves out. A ripping bar works well for this procedure. The second tip we want you to know is that the cable produces extreme heat. The zinc coating on the cable can attach itself to the sheaves when it cools. After you disconnect the spelter socket, you should take a couple of pry bars and work around the sheaves to make sure the cable is moving freely. Depending on the severity of the impact, you should then move to the back bottom cylinder sheave and then the front mobile bottom sheave following the cable until you see that the cable is moving freely. After the cable is moving freely, you should inspect the cable for any damage. You should read the installation manual for exact procedures on determining whether the rope will pass this inspection. Next, run a chain or strap under the sled, back to the front mobile sheave assembly, and attach it to the pin shackle supplied with the front mobile sheaves. Pull out the mobile sheaves, making sure that the spelter socket is traveling freely back to the front sled. Take your time on this procedure, as you may have to guide the spelter socket over the support gussets. When the spelter socket gets close to the front sled, reattach it to the sled, because the cable may be too tight if you perform this procedure last. Next, you should continue pulling on the mobile sheaves until you can replace the shear bolts in the front cylinder sheave assembly. Performing this after you have the spelter socket attached will let you put some tension on the cable. Reinstall the anti-rotation pins in the sheaves. You will need to line up the holes for the pins to be reinserted. There are five locations that these pins must go through. When the pins are flush with the center pin, you can put the cover plates back in position. Check the cable to see that it is taut. The cable adjuster eye bolt can be used to slacken or to tighten the cable during or after resetting. Inspect all of the anchor bolts, side panels, and other parts for damage. Inspect the cylinder for any dents or signs of damage. Once you have completed a thorough final inspection, you are now done with your repair, and the unit is ready to be put back into service. Please refer to your owner's manual for additional information.